Yeah. My man. What up, brother? How you doing? What's up, bro? How are you? Just another day I'm, in paradise. I'm excited for this, man. I brushed my teeth. I, like, put the order in on. <laughs> <laughs> I did that, too. So I guess we're both ready to go. <laughs> hey, can you uh, wipe your uh, camera? I think it's, like, foggy. Yeah, it's like... It, it's actually uh, I have a screen over it because it's my art art iPad. So unfortunately, that comes with the oh, territory. Right. I mean, if it's a real problem, I can jump on my phone. No, I just want to show people how pretty you are. <laughs> well, I'm not nothing compared to you, so I gotta I gotta put this glowy effect on it. <laughs> All right, man. So how are you? <clears throat> Cab, you there? And we're back. All right. Yes, sir. So, uh, so how's it going, man? How's this uh, quarantine been treating you? I can't complain. You know, I uh, it sucks not being able to go to the gym and stuff. But as far as everything else, I, I mean, I pretty much <laughs> keep to myself and stay home and don't really go out anyway. So. It, Comparatively to most people, it's not that different for me. Yeah, I agree. I've I'm still I've still been doing the same thing, training as much as I can at home. Obviously, can't mm. do intense training, but it's still yeah. something. I'm actually trying yeah. to look at it as yeah. uh, as a positive, where it's it's letting our uh, bodies rest. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, that's true. It's probably it's probably good for all of us not to be uh, brutalized every day for a little bit. Yeah, we don't get that often. Um, no, so it, speaking of speaking of speaking of uh, resting, what was uh, what was your most difficult um, injury that you had to deal with? I mean, they're all difficult in different ways. <laughs> I, I, you know, I don't know why I'm just plagued with with injuries uh, all throughout my career. But it's actually, I mean, in a lot of ways, it's been helpful to have to go through those difficult things because you know they happen whether you have injuries or not so kind of learning that process has been uh helpful but yeah the biggest one was the knee for sure because um you know that one one i mean that was one where it was like i don't even know if i'll be able to train again let alone fight again or or particularly fight at a high level again um so like right after surgery you know i'm laying in bed in agony for a week and those kinds of thoughts are what was going through my mind. Like, how am I going to do this? Can I do this? Um, you know, it really just started with like most things, like I am going to do this. I don't care how long it takes or how hard it is or how difficult things may be. You know, I just made up my mind that I'm going to get back. Yeah. I think that's the, uh, that's the key to make up your mind. And we actually had a, had a question from somebody um, named Akash Singh. And he was asking, how do you manage failure and setbacks? So that was, that's a perfect, uh, perfect answer. I think it's just to, um, yeah. what's up, Tiffany tattoos. That's uh, a perfect way. Set your mind onto something and don't look back. You just keep going forward. Yeah. I mean, the, I think the, I think the most important <laughs> thing is no matter what you do, it's going to be difficult. I mean, if you want to do something substantial anyway, if you have goals, it's always going to be difficult. You're always going to have injuries. You're always going to have bad days you're always going to have setbacks and failures and it's part of the process and once you kind of understand that they're not as detrimental when they happen you can kind of you have a better framework for what it is you know normally when you're not used to it it just it's like the end of the world and like oh i can't do anything and then you you know dust yourself off and all right where am i at right now how do i just get going and what can i do uh, and, and do you just Baby steps, <laughs> baby steps. Yeah, yeah, that's it. The small, the small uh, steps. The uh, it's like the um, like if you don't make a uh, you don't you don't make like a huge uh, uh, huge transition right off the bat. It's got to be those small little steps, and that's those are the ones that are like uh, unnoticeable. So if you keep making those small steps, yeah. then you know that's what's gonna bring you to the uh, to that end goal quicker and faster. Um, 
So what are you what are you uh, working on now as far as your art goes? Anything in, in particular? Particular? Uh, Have you been I mean, doing the art? Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, for a while I was just you know trying to just maintain, and I I try to you know keep it um, you know work on my art for at least a few minutes a day, so I'm, I'm maintaining that skill. And then uh, you know when when projects come up, then I'll kind of pick things up. And I just got uh, commissioned to do uh, this uh, painting, so that's kind of what I'm uh, doing right now. Is actually um, of me and uh, Yamato from the Fremont fight. Somebody wanted, so I'm gonna do a big piece of that. Yeah, that was uh, was that the uh the one with your? That's not the one with your trainer, right? This is something else. No, no, no. The, yeah, this is uh just a a new thing. Cool. And um, what was the uh? What are the plans after after this whole mess is over? Are you uh planning on <laughs> sticking a, with the that's a question, right? Yeah, with um, <laughs> with the kickboxing or transitioning into something else. Uh, I mean, I'd like to really kind of take the kickboxing as as far as I can. I don't really, I've never wanted to go back and forth, which is also why I never wanted to get going with like uh, MMA or even the boxing. It was like, if I'm going to do it, I want to be all in or or not at all. And when you're it's difficult when you're bouncing back and forth because you're, you're taking a little bit away from each thing. Um, so for me, I did yeah. play around with the idea of like, yeah, I could just go get a, a, a tie fight and, you know, scratch that itch real quick and then go back. But at the same time, I feel like I've, I've put so much time in now and progressed so much that I don't want to let go of that. And I really want to kind of keep going with this for as long as I can. Yeah, that's a good point. I think uh, that's also key. That goes back to uh, the word focus, you know, and just sticking to something, one thing, and becoming great at that one thing. You know, if you have too many yeah. things going around, then you're, you know, uh, jack of all trades and master of none. But I think it's, uh, I mean, <laughs> yeah, and, and I don't want to, I don't want to say that's bad. If that's something that that like a person is into and wants to learn a a, a lot of different things, then so be it. But I, I would like to just be great at one thing and that's it. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah I, I, I know always felt that way too. Yeah. Are you, uh, have you been watching a lot of like movies and stuff like that? TV shows? Yeah, a lot I mean, of Netflix shows. Uh, I just, yeah. <laughs> I actually, we just watched the um, Carnival, Carnival Row thing is on amazon prime that was pretty dope yeah. it was uh orlando bloom and you know we just got through that so yeah i was watching a lot of times it's just stuff to have on while i'm working on other things though i'm not really paying too much yeah attention. that's true yeah i agree with that um are you into uh guy Ritchie, the bird the director yeah he made I, I, I a snatch yeah did you see that new one the gentleman mm -hmm. You know, it's weird. I I tried to watch it twice, and something about it was just bothering me. I don't know, I don't know what it was. It was almost as if, um, you know, like when people try try too hard to like replicate other things they've done in the past. Yeah, and it's, as opposed to coming off with that kind of original, um, you know, real vibe. I don't know. It just it felt kind of forced to me in a way. And I, I don't know, I think I'm really like sensitive to that. Cause I, I, I really like those things as the years have gone by, just bother me more and more. So as soon as I feel it, I, I just can't, <laughs> I can't do it. And, and it's probably, you know, really cool, great movie. I, I just, I couldn't get to it. Yeah. I know what you mean. I, uh, when I started watching, I was like, man, what the fuck this guy, like, this is definitely not in line with what he's been doing. But then as the story progressed, I I started oh, yeah. liking it a lot more, and by the end, it was yeah. an awesome movie. I think. Oh, that, I mean, I'll probably uh, try to get, get get through it. You know what it what it did feel like to me was as if somebody else was trying to emulate his style. You know. Yeah. Like they were like somebody else was trying to copy his style, and that was right, the movie. Right, right. So I don't know. Maybe he just wasn't as involved like he used to be, or lost a little something. But yeah, I'll I'll try to watch it again and see if I can get through yeah. the whole thing. 
And uh, by the way, are you able to read questions or no? Yeah, I can see them. All right, cool. Because people are asking questions. So if you want to um, <laughs> knock some of those out of the park, because I got questions here too. Um, feel free. Uh, a bunch of people asked if I left CSA. Yeah, I left like, I don't know, two years ago, maybe. I left, what did I, I mean, technically I left right a couple months before I fought uh, Varga. I moved down south and then I was traveling back and forth training. I'd go up there for like six weeks at a time. Um, and then I just transitioned fully down to yeah. And, it, you know, people think like something happened. It was, I'd always plan on doing this. It was just. Life and career. But it wasn't a uh, like personal problem or anything like that. Yeah. Um, is there any difference between. Um where you're at now, you're in uh, San Diego. Yeah, I go back and forth between San Diego and um, LA really. But um, most of my training is how in is, San Diego. Yeah, how's the, uh, how's the life in like San Diego versus where you were before? Is it slower or faster? Uh, not, not for me. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, I'm really, uh, I mean, I kind of always do yeah. what I do regardless of where I'm at in the world, you know, it's like I'm focused on my training and right, what I'm right. getting ready for and the other things that I'm doing. I don't spend any the world of, of San Diego or San Francisco or Vegas, you know, very focused on what it is that I'm doing. Yeah. Somebody was asking, uh, when you fought Sanchai, um, what did you learn from that experience? What did I learn? I don't know. What did I learn? I mean, there's so many things you learn in fights that I think it's difficult to really put into words. You know, like, like it was like after the first time I went to Thailand, he'd come back and be like, oh, show me what you learned. Like, well, you know, I can't really put it into words i'm just better right it's just you know experience I mean? yeah yeah so it, i mean that's really what it is is you just you just gain every time you fight somebody with higher experience you you uh, implement a lot of that knowledge and um one just your 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 confidence and your ability to fight at that level and then two seeing how they move the things they use and do good and bad you know just gives you more information yeah. Yeah, I, I I agree with that. Um and I have a question here from uh Malcolm Hill. He's asking uh can you address the training benefits with other people better and or not experienced than you? What a fighter who is serious and taking it to the next level needs to do to get proper or valid training. Oh, like getting good training partners? Yeah. And you and I both experienced that. <laughs> yeah, so obviously you, we both know. I mean, you're, a lot of times you are very limited to your surroundings, particularly once you develop to a certain level. Eventually, you just run out of people to train with. You know, I mean, the, the level here in the States, um, although it's improving, how many people are really in that kind of world-class um, status? And how many people are in that status that are, are your weight class that are in your uh, vicinity. I mean, there's only a handful anyway, let alone whether they're around you. Yeah. So you, you just kind of got to learn to work with what you got. Even if the people um, that you're training with aren't the best, there's always something you can work on. There's really, there's, there's never a time when you just can't do anything. There's always something you can do, whether people are better. Yeah, it's great if people are better than you. It's great if you're at a, the best gym in the world with the best coach in the world, with the best equipment in the world. But even that doesn't necessarily equal success. So um, it's about, you know, taking advantage of, of what you do have and not uh, letting what you don't have really like, grind you down. Or you got to pick your ass up and, and, and move and go somewhere yeah. that, that does have those things. And, and um, you know, like, like, you know, it's like sometimes 
you get your normal training in and then every once in a while you get to you take a trip somewhere to get some higher level sparring or or whatever else and then you bring it back and implement that i mean for me that's kind of what going to thailand is 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 going there sharpening up you know stepping my game up a little bit and then coming back and, and continuing on all the things i've progressed with over there yeah i agree with that and um what what i found uh worked for me is the fact that you're training with somebody that's that's a lower level, they're not going to be able to tell you where you're making those mistakes, especially those small little minute details, because those are the things that the the you know somebody with much more experience is going to catch. So what you have to do um, to answer Malcolm's question is you have to actually think about what your opponent is doing right or wrong, and then what you're doing right or wrong. So you have to think about the full picture. So when you're training hitting pads, um, you have to think about, okay, where am I leaving myself exposed? Where am I leaving myself open? What well, my uh, pad holder can see, or even when you're uh, sparring, obviously, as well. So that's what, what really helped me out um, tremendously, and that's what helped me sharpen up my eye as well. You know, that's what uh, conditioned me um, mm -hmm. as far as that goes. Yeah, I think um, it's important to get very – learn early to be self-reliant not to have somebody constantly on your back like telling you to uh go run go hit the bag go go get your reps in and and learning how to recognize kind of where you're um limited or, or making errors you know you can't always have somebody telling you what's right and wrong you got to figure it out for yourself and the sooner you can do that the the, the more options you're going to have moving forward then you can train with people who are uh, bigger, smaller than you, more experience, less experience, because there, there's really benefit in what everybody does to one extent or other, even if it's learning things that you shouldn't be doing. You know, uh, if somebody's worse than you, kind of watch where their openings are and how they move. Yeah. And, and because some, you're going to fight somebody where you're going to need that information. Right. And um, to go a little further on, if you're fighting against somebody or sparring against somebody that's uh, that's not as good as you, then you work on uh, certain things that you feel like you need improvement. You challenge yourself and maybe just do a round just hitting knees. You yeah. tell yourself, okay, this round, I'm not going to let him score any points. I'm blocking every single kick he throws, and I'm only returning with knees. Yeah. Um, and then, and then um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. I mean, you just have to always challenge yourself more. I'm yeah, you almost, you, uh, you almost look at it like uh, isolation sparring where – you're limited to what you can do, you know, like you, I used to train with like little kids. What I would do with the kids is I'd keep my hands down and just work on my vision because I know they can't hurt me, work on rolling with punches and minimizing damage that it's going to be beneficial once you bring it up to somebody who can hurt you. That's a time to practice these things, not, not just stomp people out because you're better than them. Right, exactly. Yeah, because you know at the end of the day when you walk into that ring, with somebody who's the same experience as you or more experience than, you know, you're, you're, all those lies are going to come, <laughs> come, uh, come up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that, that's why, that's why most people that do that don't ever get in the ring. Right. Exactly. Um, let me go off another question. It says by Kev's 56 as an up and coming fighter who wants to go pro and travel, how do you plan that journey to another country to look for fights and build structure? How do you plan it? Yeah. Um, get some money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, that's always like a big thing is once you get to another place like Thailand or Australia or England, it's, it's easier to get fights there and get experience. But you got to kind of stay there and put the time in just like you would here. You know, for me, it was get as much experience as you can on the amateur level and on the, the national level. And then once you've kind of done as much as you can, that's then you kind of graduate to pro, then you graduate to staying overseas and, you know, going through that whole process. Yeah. Um, I'm just reading some of these comments it says, uh, this is directed towards me time for a good fade or a haircut. <laughs> Dude, I cut my own hair. No I can do right now. That's that's a pretty slick fade right there. I'm a little jelly right now. I appreciate it, man. Yeah, that was, that's I'm, nice. I was getting out of control. I'm like, you know what? Fuck it. I, was, I can't do it. What did you do for the back? How do you get the back? Mirror. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think I have the dexterity for that. That's the hard one because everything's 
backwards. Yeah. And you're trying to, yeah, you have to totally like melt your brain into a different dimension, but it's really helpful. Like a lot of these things, I look at them as kind of mental exercises, coordination exercises. And if right, you look right. at it that way, it's just, uh, it's more like homework. Yeah. Hey, let me ask you a personal question. How do you feel about those, like, um, like all those uh, exercises that help, um, that help with like hand-eye coordination, you know, like the tennis ball that you attach here and then you like mm -hmm. punch and then those like lights that you have to hit. How do you feel about that as far as translating it into our sport where you're going in the ring and fighting? What are your personal yeah. opinions on that? That's a personal question. <laughs> yeah. Cause I got my personal answer. Oh, well, too. you know, you know, there, there's so many things like that, um, that are, they're beneficial additional tools that, that do help w with things. But um, like, I mean, it's like, like a lot of things doing like footwork and doing these other things. Like you don't necessarily have to do them and they might not change your game completely, but they might let your mind and body uh, adapt to different uh, stimulus. And, 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 and like with the hand high coordination, you know, anytime you can, exercise and train your eyes that's helpful anytime you can exercise and train your feet it's helpful depending on what you're using it for you know i i use a lot of those things almost as a as a warm-up as opposed to like a workout you know yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna do my footwork drills i'm gonna do my some balance stuff and and hand eye coordination and that's just kind of to get me going in the day and to get my brain into like training mode because it's a I mean, it's not a hindrance at all. So either way, you're you're getting some benefit, even if it's just waking your body up. Yeah. Um, what type of workouts do you guys do for cardio? And what advice would you give to get a guy back in shape? All the best for both. Jeez. I, I guess it just depends where you're at and, and what you're looking to do. For me, I mean, the easiest thing to improve cardio quickly is is like sprinting or, or like sprint type pad work where you're just crushing crushing it. You know, it, it's just a matter of what it is you're working on and how much time you got. You know, it's like if you got if you have months to prepare, you don't need to start going crazy day one. You know, you're you're trying to build up your strength, your foundation, your gas tank. And then you can start really implementing that that high intensity stuff. So that's a pretty broad question to answer. Yeah, I think the best answer for that is you just start. That's it. <laughs> yeah, you know, just, get just going. go out there and do whatever it is. Go for a walk if you want, and then start with a light jog, then turn it into a run, and then you know, just everybody knows what they have to do in order to lose weight and get into shape. You know exactly what you need to do. You don't need me and Kevin to tell you guys that, you know? Or if you want to lose weight, put the spoon down. That's yeah. it. How simple is that? Just yeah. stop eating. It's pretty simple. It's pretty I, simple. I mean, everybody knows what, what they got to do. Um, what do you look for in a gym and a trainer and favorite fights opponents that each of you have had? So what do you look for in a gym and a trainer? I guess this might be like if you're going to uh, Thailand, but even if not, let's say yeah. um, you're you're here looking for a gym in, in America. Yeah, I mean, there's there's a lot. I mean, for me, it's always just um, their kind of knowledge of and and application of uh, not just fundamentals, but details. You know, very detail oriented. Anybody can replicate movement and numbers and combinations like that doesn't really teach you anything if you're not yeah. and if you're not um giving people knowledge all you're really doing is is, is dancing together <laughs> and that's it you're like you're not gaining any information so in and, and that's not to say that's necessarily bad there's a time and a place for for doing those kinds of things but if you're not learning and progressing then maybe you should train somewhere else yeah and um what's uh what opponent favorite fights and opponents that you had uh do i get to name multiple ones because i need to name multiple <laughs> yeah give us two. Oh, two? shit 
that narrows it down. Um, all right, you know what? Give us three because I know Sancho is one of them. Yeah, but it's almost like that they can't even be on the list because he's on his own list. You know. All right, like, you're right. Fuck it. Then give yeah, me three so, other ones. So you gotta, you gotta, you always gotta subtract, subtract Sancho because no matter what, he's gonna be at the top. So what are you gonna do? Um, I would say uh, Tomahawk, um, Yamato, and Malapet probably. Why? Uh, what was good about Malapet? I mean, in all those fights, it was the um, you know, even if 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 you say maybe like I dominated the fight, it was it. I had to be like on my shit, you know, <laughs> like he, the people that force you to elevate your game and, and, and maintain that, that sharpness, um, you know, skill wise and stylistically, those are my favorites, you know, like that, the ones that the people that I like to watch fight are the, the fights that I like to have. So all those people, um, you know, we had a really good, uh, you know, conversation. <laughs> and that's kind of what fighting is. It's conversation. Yeah. You're, you're, you're going back and forth. You're, you're asking questions, they're giving you answers and vice versa. And, and for me, those three really uh, always stand out, uh, particularly because I loved watching those guys fight prior. And, and then to be in there with them, it's like I'm watching them fight me. Yeah. Um, what do you guys think of Lethway as a martial art? And would you guys be down for a Lethway fight in your life? Uh, I, I, you know, from the beginning, I always wanted to do one. It just never kind of came up. Um, what do I think about it as a martial art? Every, every martial arts different or every style of fighting is different and it comes with its own thing. Like MMA is very different from, uh, <laughs> boxing, which is very different from Thai boxing, which is different from kickboxing, which is different from left weight. And just because you're good in one, like if you're good in Muay Thai, doesn't mean you're going to be good in left way. It's, it's, it, it changes the whole um, dynamic uh, of the sport. It's not even comparable. So it's just a, uh, a, a different uh, um, mountain to climb, so to say. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't, me personally, I don't mind the sport. Um, it's just the fact that I'm I'm too into in in deep with Muay Thai already, so it would just be a waste. Like you know, Kevin was saying in the beginning of the show, yeah. uh, it would be a waste of my time if I went into something else, you know, because I'm trying to just be great at one one thing. So now that I'm in Muay Thai, that's it. That's the only thing un until I achieve all the goals that I that I wanted to uh, to achieve. Then I can think about other uh, sports and avenues. Um, yeah. Somebody asked. How much does it hurt when you kick shin to shin? I don't know. I don't think it hurts at all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it hurts a lot worse, like kicking somebody in the elbow with your toe. Like that yeah. shit sucks. Um, you know, but but again, most of that real like noticeable sharp pain is in training. You know, in a fight, you don't have time to think about it. You know, I always tell people it's like if you're running down the street trying to get away from somebody and you stub your toe you're not going to stop and think about it you know you're right maybe afterwards you will so it's the same way in fighting even though maybe things do hurt in the moment there it's you're already on to the next thing so you your brain can't even really recognize it for i mean for the most part there's a lot of things that that obviously hurt but but not like the not not comparable to outside the ring like in the gym when you smash your shin that's you stop <laughs> yeah um yeah and and over over the uh the course of you know years you start losing uh some feeling on the shins as well um so if, like i don't know for my shin if i like even scratch it or pinch it in some points there's like no feeling it's just dead skin so that's that's kind yeah, of yeah cool i think too. Well, uh, another thing uh Another thing people don't recognize is as you gain experience, you're, you're learning placement better and timing better, as well as your right. shin conditioning is getting better. Where in the beginning, you're just winging shit out there with no, no thought about anything and smashing elbows and uh, knees and, and smashing your feet. So you come out of it. I mean, I used to come out of fights in the amateur <laughs> days. I couldn't walk for weeks 
and I'm wearing shin guards, you know, because I'm just fucked up. Because, yeah. you know, I go back and watch the fight, and, like, every kick is, like, right into the under elbow and right into the knee. I'm like, oh, yeah, that's probably why it hurts. Yeah, I remember. Have you ever, like, uh, hurt yourself or hit something in, like, a sensitive spot, and you kind of, like, blacked out because the pain was so excruciating? <laughs> I had, like, uh, I think it was, I'll, like, my... Yeah like my fourth fight or something like that amateur and mm -hmm. i did that i hit a shin and it was in the like the worst spot it was like right on the on top of the foot somewhere and i remember like yeah. black blacking out like everything just went black from the pain <laughs> for like a few seconds and i was like holy shit i need to wake the fuck up or i'm fucked that was like the worst <laughs> worst uh worst pain i've experienced yeah, uh, when I was uh, just starting out as a pro, I kicked this guy in the knee in Mexico with my foot. So, like, I ran late, I ran at him and leg kicked him and hit his knee. And I thought, like, I felt it kind of like fold around it. And, oh, and I, like, yeah, you know, time slows down. And I thought when I stepped down, my foot was just going to explode. And yeah, that, yeah. Was, that was one of the worst ones. All right, we'll do one more question from the computer, and then we'll go on the uh, the live feed. Um, this is from a Serbian dude. All right, he wants to know, is there like a – can you make like a parallel between uh, uh, Muay Thai and like spirituality? And also, how do the Buddhist monks um, look at the uh, the violence in uh, in the ring in Thailand? What was the first part? Can you look at what in spirituality? Is is there like a parallel between spirituality and uh, Muay Thai fighting? Oh, I um, I think for a, a lot of many people there are. I don't want to say a lot, but but a lot of people, a lot of people that are spiritually minded, uh, they 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 implement that into fighting. Like for myself, it's there is an element of, of spiritualism and, 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 you know, things that maybe aren't of this world that's right in front of us. Um, you know, I think that comes, you know, with a lot of, uh, it just, it, it's really an individual thing. So for some people, it's very much uh, a spiritual um, experience and, and some people it isn't. I, I think it just depends on, on the person. Yeah. And also, um, how's your outlook on the coronavirus situation? And how much do you think it's going to affect um, the future of Muay Thai? Yeah, that's the tough thing. I mean, I, like the ramifications of this across all levels of life is, is I think, real, where the real damage is. I mean, obviously, that is where the real damage has happened and is going to happen. And um, as far as how it's going to affect sports and fighting and everything else, geez, I, I don't know. Man, I, I, I really, we're just like in this unknown kind of dimension right now. I hope that we all get to get back in the ring. And, you know, obviously with the, the UFC started back up with that. And I think that, that was great for just humanity to see. And, um, yeah, it might be kind of that weird thing where we're going back to the amateur days where we're fighting in front of nobody, which is whatever, fine for me. Yeah, I think, uh, Muay Thai life in Thailand is starting back up sometime in uh, in June, mid June. Mm. Um, I'm sure it's going to be, um, you know, very strict. With same thing, just having it, having uh, having the uh, fighters there, the corners and judges, and that's it for for probably a while. But I don't think there's going to be much of an effect on the sport itself. I mean, it's going to have an ex effect just as much as it has on every other business out there. So. I think we're on uh, we're track to getting things back together. All right, so let's start firing off these crazy questions over here. <clears throat> Name one golden age fighter you'd want to fist fisty cuff with. That's like a, that's like a fist fight, what, right? Why can't people just say fist fight? I don't know what these words mean. Uh my gosh. Uh, man. What a weird question, by the way. I'm, I wanna let you I wanna let you just the teeth. <laughs> You're gonna what? I'm gonna let you answer that. I wanna hear your answer. Alright, I'm gonna choose choose Boon Lai. 
And that's mm. just because he's my one of my favorite golden era fighters, Bunlai or uh, Karahat. Those guys. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, man, there's there's so many. There's uh, yeah. Kansak, who who by the way lives here in New Jer in uh, in Jersey. Um, yeah. But yeah, man, any one of those fighters, I would love to uh, fight just because I would I would learn so much from them. You know, so it's nothing. Yeah, I mean, you could nothing uh, disrespect disrespectful about that. Yeah, you could literally pick any single fighter from that entire era. And, right, right. Geez, like, unbelievable, unbelievable. Yeah, it was, it, it's such different. You know, my, my father used to be a, a professional soccer player, and I ask him often if there's a difference between um, professional soccer now, like in Europe, and then if there's, a, if there's a, you know, if there's a difference between now and then back then when he played in the 70s. And he says, yeah, absolutely. And and to me, when I watch it, it's like, it's the same fucking shit. You guys are just kicking a, a ball around, around the field. But to him, those small little minute details, there's a big difference. And yeah. same thing with, uh, with Muay Thai nowadays. You know, you can see a huge difference to me between yeah. uh, the fighters in the, uh, in the 90s and then, you know, today's uh, fighters and the way we fight. And, man, yeah. it was just, it, it, I, I liked it a lot better back then. You know, it wasn't so well, much about had, strength and power. Yeah, everybody had their own. Every fighter was so different than all the others. None of them were the same. You know, very unique, very stylish. And, um, you know, I think in every art, in every sport, the problem starts to happen once money gets involved, unfortunately. Yeah. Because obviously we all want it to be bigger and better, but that's when you tend to lose that element of, of, of um, personality and style and, um, and skill um, right. to, to a degree, you know, and uh, you know, like you look at boxing now, obviously the skills better, but you know, back then, shit, man, they were just hard. <laughs> Those are some hard dudes. Man. And same thing uh, with Muay Thai, I think because, because, the level was so high, everyone was really forced to up their own game against each other. You know, it's like being in a gym surrounded by greats. You're going to be, you're going to be forced to be great or get out. Yeah. Uh, much respect to both of you. Stay safe. Okay. Um, let me get another question. This is from Tris. At what age did you start fighting? Um, I was 23 when I had my first fight. Here's your inspiration, guys. 23 when he started fighting, and look where he came uh, at the at the level he he went up to. That's when I started training too, not just when right. I first had my exactly. first fight. I, I I started training then, and uh, yeah, shit, I never thought I'd be here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But the the reason why he's here is because he just kept going. He kept moving forward. He didn't let anything you know, stop him uh, from achieving those goals. He had one thing on his mind, which is to be great and be the best that he can be. And this is where it landed him. It wasn't like he, I'm sure, I'm sure you probably didn't. Let me see what NJMT is saying. What book are you reading right now? That's, that's for you. But let me uh, just finish my thought. It wasn't like he, he thought about being okay. I want to be the champion of the world. Maybe he did, but I feel like you probably just want to be the best that you can be at something, and that was it. Yeah, you know, and that uh, I was very fortunate to have to figure that out my very first fight because I got just annihilated. And and prior to that, um, you know, my I I took to this like a fish to water. I, I like I gained so much experience so quick and and developed so so rapidly and then the fight happened i'm like oh yeah i'm on my way i'm just gonna go like crush this dude and like on to the next one and then i just got just the 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 shit kicked out of me and i was forced to sit there and think shit maybe that maybe this isn't for me maybe maybe i'm not meant to do this and then what i had to come to realize was i don't care if i'm meant to do this i don't care if i'm meant to be the best ever i'd love to do this and i'm gonna be as good as i can possibly be and being forced to face that really day one completely gave me a um, a good perspective going into the future because I know that 
you know, that those are just the uh, circumstances, whether you win, win or lose fights, whether you get to certain levels or not, it's all a, it's all a, a journey that you're on and everyone's is very unique and different. We all can't be the greatest of all time, but you can be as good as you can be. And, and, and that's unique and that's enough. Yeah. Good, good uh, answer. And um, to answer my coach, coach Ray's uh, question, what book are you reading right now? Um, I literally just finished, uh, the obstacle is the way, um, and I'm, shit, I got like 20 books. I have to, a list of 20 books. I have to pick one. Um, so I'm not reading anything. I just finished like a week ago. <laughs> nice. I, I, res I respect you and anybody else who willingly reads books. <laughs> I can't, I can't do any of that stuff, man. I was... I was horrible in school. Anytime we had like a summer reading, I would have to like beg a, a friend to, you know, write it out what the book was about and stuff like that. Oh, I, I, didn't, I didn't ever read in school. I refused to read. And I would, I would do book reports on books I'd never read other than the back copy. Exactly. That's, yeah. <laughs> that's kind of, that's actually what kind of got me going in the, the, the writing world because my teacher, like one time she gave me an A and, and she's like, I know you didn't read this book, <laughs> yeah. but she said, like, you're so creative in your writing. You're like, I gave you an A and you should really, you know, you like pursue that. And uh, That's I didn't really start, I didn't start reading books probably till I started fighting because I was traveling overseas and stuff and I had nothing to do. Like the first time I went to Thailand, I didn't even have a computer and, and there wasn't a TV, there wasn't anything. So I just read, I was there for three months. I, I didn't even look at a computer like once. Yeah. Um, did you ever do MMA? Because somebody's asking, what's your opinion about transitioning from Muay Thai to MMA? Yeah, I did one MMA fight, but um, unfortunately, it was back in the day when I just couldn't get fights, so I was taking anything I could get. I, I probably put in three weeks of going from no training to the fight <laughs> yeah. and then uh, no MMA training to the fight. And then after that, I, I, I did a lot of... Uh, uh, jiu-jitsu and wrestling and stuff just because I, I really enjoy the training but um, you know I never really had any passion or drive to uh, do MMA it was just a matter of I couldn't get any fights so I was taking anything I'd get and fortunately um, the, the uh, Muay Thai and kickboxing world progressed after that and I was able to start being more consistent cool even from Serbia saying hello from Serbia hello <laughs> Um, have you ever fucked somebody up that you didn't like in Muay Thai? If so, who was it? <laughs> I've only ever fought one person that was really bothered me. And that's just because we fought once. And then, you know, there was a lot of kind of shadiness in the first fight. And, you know, I fought in a really pissed off, angry way, which for me is backfired completely. And I felt like shit. But fortunately, I snapped out of it and, um, was able to turn things around and, and knock them out. But that was the only person I ever fought that I had kind of a personal issue with. Um, and it, it, it wasn't good for me. <laughs> some people, yeah, yeah. some people need to be angry. Like Joe Schilling, he's, he's angry. He's like, I'm gonna fucking kill you. And, uh, but for me, it it does the opposite. It, 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 it messes me up. It gets in my head and then I can't fight. Like I'm very, uh, uh, kind of methodical and, and, and um, yeah, I'm aggressive and pressure and all that other stuff, but there's no emotion behind it for me. Yeah. For me, it's just the task. That's it. It's a job and that's it. Yeah. And uh, I, I agree with you. If, if I get uh, emotional, then it's just going to uh, work to my disadvantage. Mm -hmm. um, what fight did you both feel most comfortable in? What did you guys change in your training camp? Jeez, most comfortable? I don't know. You know, it's it's almost, I mean, a lot of them, it's usually after the fact and you look back and be like, oh, yeah, I guess I felt really comfortable in there. Uh, I, like, I, I would say it's, for me, it's more about moments than the whole fight was just like a cruising, you know, because even the fights where I'm dominating, a lot of times maybe I'm dominating someone that's not very good. <laughs> so right. I'm not comfortable with that. I'm like, this yeah. sucks. I want to I wanna get out of here. Um, was there a time 
in your life when you had when you lost the fight and you said I'm not made for boxing? Yeah, my first fight. <laughs> <laughs> My first fight, um, and there's been a couple, like um, when I had two back-to-back -back knockout losses, that was um, uh, Yamato 2 and Rungrat. After that, it, it was, you know, especially at this age and stage of my career, it's like maybe, maybe I can't do this anymore. You know, maybe f physically I can't do this anymore. I, I, I love it. I'm training my ass off. I still felt like I was progressing, but but I started questioning whether my body could take it anymore. And um, that was a difficult kind of hurdle to mentally get over. Um, um, yeah, but that I think that always happens to a degree when you lose or, or maybe you get dropped with something or hurt with something that normally wouldn't bother you, that those kind of questions go through your mind. I, I feel... I feel like I have just as many questions now that I did the day I started. Like, I don't know if I can do this. I don't know how long I can do this. I don't know if I'm going to be good at this. I That's never gone away from me. You know, it's just, you, you understand that that's there. You're always going to have doubts and questions. It's just a matter of whether you want to go forward or not. Yeah, and that's, that's what I see with a lot of these, um, some of these people that ask these questions. They think that, you know, uh, people at a high at a higher level don't go through the same issues and problems that they do but i like you said i have doubts as well every single day but it's it's just the difference between uh are you gonna stop doing what you're doing or continue moving forward whether you have those doubts or not you know and it's same same thing with uh with fear the only difference is um we're able to uh, manage our emotions when we have fear and when we go into a fight versus somebody who can manage their emotions and then you know they break the break under under pressure and either get hurt in a fight or quit and never never return so yeah. that's the only difference we're exactly the same people it's just one group of people is able to manage it and go forward the other the other group isn't able to manage it you know it's like that fight or uh, flight mechanism yeah, that was always a really big realization for me early on. Fortunately, I got to be around a lot of uh, higher level people with a lot of experience. And I got to see that they were they were like petrified to fight. And I'm like, why are you scared? You got like 200 fights. Like, yeah, but I this is new. This is I don't want to I don't want to look bad. I don't want to, you know, lose. I don't want to get hurt. Of course. So that doesn't go away. And even if it's just for me, it's much more of a um kind of a performance uh issue thing like like i always want to just do my best you know i don't think or or gets overly concerned with maybe getting uh injured or losing or anything like that i just want to know that i did my very best in there and i didn't hold back and i didn't take any shortcuts so i think everybody's level of and reason for anxiety and fear and doubt is very different like you know, mine is different than other people are like, I'm really just scared to like get hit. And uh, it's petrifying. Like I never had that, but I had more of a performance anxiety uh, type of fear that I deal with. Yeah. Um, who had the hardest kicks out of anyone you fought? Fucking Malapet by a hundred miles. <laughs> wow. Really? Dude. Oh my gosh. Like I, I don't know. I just have like nightmares from that because <laughs> it was one of those things where even in the fifth round when he was exhausted, um, there was so much force and weight behind them and his freaking legs are like the size of my whole body, you know, yeah. and, and especially for me, like I came up watching him fight, watching him just murder, murder foreigners like like it's a joke you know, like laughing while he's breaking them in half. And I never thought we would fight because he was like 15 pounds heavier than me. So it was never even a, it was never even a conscious thought, like maybe one day this is going to happen and level wise too. And then when it got offered, I was like, all right, fuck it. Let's go. Let's yeah, do it. The, uh, the hardest kicker I thought he was, um, it was, a, it was a fight in uh Rajlinen stadium. Uh, and it was against the tie. And um, I remember after the fight, my whole, this like bone right here, whatever it is, tibula, fibula, ulna, radial, I don't know what it is, but it hurt for like a month and a half after that fight. 
and all the muscles here were like, I don't know, it was like nerve damage or something. I, I wasn't able to like make a fist or or lift up my arm properly. It was it was so painful after that uh, after that experience. Yeah, both of my elbows have all the scar tissue in them from that fight. All these little like bumps of scar tissue. So yeah. if I like if if I rest on my elbow even on a bed sometimes i'll fall to the ground in agony because it, it like presses into the um scar tissue yeah it's part of the game um god damn it i lost my place all right here it is do you prefer to fight back to back or give yourself time in between fights I would, I'd fight every day if I could. Uh, obviously, injuries and those kinds of things always you got to take into account. For me, it was like I always wished I had the option to fight maybe every month or every two months. And then, you know, if you can't, you can't. But that was always the most difficult thing for me because, you know, being here in the States is like you can't, even if you're not ready for a fight, you kind of just got to take it regardless because that's the only way you're going to get this experience. If you pass on one, the next one might not be for a year. You don't yeah. know. And uh, so, I, you know, I kind of came up that way, which was always stay ready, fight anytime, anywhere, anyone that you can because you gain experience. And that was the only way I was able to progress the way I did because if I waited, I mean, half my fights were against people that weren't even in my same weight class. And the majority of my fights were against people who were so far more experienced than me you know, most people were thought it was like ridiculous, but I just kind of always had that mindset, you know, like no matter what I'm, I'm getting better. I'm getting experience. I might be gaining a lot of damage too, but you got to take the good with the bad. Yeah, I agree. That's the mentality to have. Um, Kev's 56. I answered that question um, before. So just wait until I repost this uh, video. How do you feel during a fight? awesome <laughs> fucking awesome <laughs> it's i mean every fight's different i would say and you know some fights for me as, as long as i'm in there with with a a high level person i you don't really have time to think so it's it, for me it's not really about how am i feeling in this moment if i'm thinking about how i feel something's wrong something's going yeah. terribly wrong or i'm fighting someone that i shouldn't be fighting right most of the time it's a uh it's you, you you're just kind of in a rhythm or you're not or you're you're you go you're in the flow or you're not and you know trying to get get back to there it's not really uh a conscious thought i think that's why a lot of uh, at least for me all my fights that were really good i don't really have many recollections <laughs> or memories of because you're just in that fight zone yeah um, hard sparring or technical sparring? <laughs> Cause that depends. <laughs> I, you know, I, I, I feel there's a time and a place for everything. More often than not, we're doing way more hard sparring than we should. Um, you know, for a variety of reasons. I think, I think as you're coming up, it's very important to know that you can kind of take some damage and just be in the fire and all these things. But as you progress, um, you know, you start getting a lot more technical with it. And, and even, even then, you know, we can, we can have hard sparring sessions, but we're not really risking the injuries that we were 10 years ago because of our experience level and, uh, right. um, our, and all of that. So as you progress, you can go harder with less risk of injury. It's, uh, you know, there's a, a balance to everything. So if you're just damaging yourself, just, just to, beat the shit out of each other you're not nobody's getting any better you know it doesn't uh right. it doesn't really benefit you so it's kind of pointless to a degree all right we got some time for a couple more questions we're about to hit an hour so the live feed is going to go off do you prefer to stay in a clinch you're dominating or score a nice sweep <laughs> uh i i mean i always like to sweep people yeah so, and you know i've never been much of a stay in a clinch <laughs> fighter so you know for me that it was always like yeah i'll land a couple of knees and i'm gonna toss you on your head yeah 
it sweeps are definitely uh satisfying do you did you realize in first round your opponent better than you <laughs> well almost all of them were better than me so yeah it was more like oh, yeah obviously it's really good Not yeah really, that's uh, that's like the time where you uh to further answer his question where you were the time where you start to learn your opponent's uh, rhythm so yeah you can probably gauge whether, whether how many how much experience the uh your opponent has or you know doesn't have so uh first second round is probably the uh that time what's up eddie abalasso absolutely absolo god damn it. <laughs> it's one of the things which are the things you change when you are near the date of the fight things i change i mean it's i would say I change uh, for me it's just a progressive things 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 become that much more intense that much more strict uh, your your just your uh, attitude and behavior starts changing into just that fight mode where you're yeah. just kind of a, a a mindless serial killer you know and i think that la definitely the last week i really feel that that just shift to you're just a fighter now you're you're barely a uh, human to a degree <laughs> Yeah, it is a it is a great feeling, definitely. Yeah. Like you know, like I'm dialed in. I'm ready. Yeah. To, I'm ready to hurt and and be hurt, and I can take it yeah. and I can give it out. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, thank you for uh, joining me and Kevin. Um, I hope to do this again with Kevin. He's definitely uh, an inspiration to uh, to all of us, and especially Kevin. You're you're what forty years old? Forty years old now. I'll be forty in July. <laughs> yeah, and and you guys see his mentality. He's still ready to uh to can you continue doing what he does. So that that gives me a lot of confidence because I'm 34 and I'm getting up there in age. And the last thing I want to ever do is quit this sport because this is the only thing that uh, this is the only thing that I truly love, and uh, that makes me happy. So he's doing it at 40. He's able to do it at 40 with all the injuries that he's had in his life. So, um, you know, that's, that's, uh, inspirational to me as well. I appreciate it, man. It was really great talking to you and we should definitely do this again. Yeah, absolutely. All, All right, right, man. It is. See you guys.